I would like to thank you all for being here today to participate in the dedication of the Prince Esther Brook Memorial. I will begin the program with some brief, brief remarks about how and why this memorial came about. As many of you know, my late wife, Alice Mickey Hinkle, was for many years a reporter and editor for the Lexington Minuteman newspaper. In 1987, she interviewed Charles Price, a past commander of the modern-day Lexington Minutemen, for a newspaper article. During the interview, she learned that for many years he had played the role of slave and soldier Prince Esterbrook in Patriots' Day reenactments of the clash that launched the Revolutionary War. I recall her coming home after that interview and talking about it. We were both amazed to learn that Lexington's militia company included a slave and that he was wounded in that first encounter. Other than that, very little was known about him. Mickey finished her article but couldn't shake a growing excitement about the story of a man who seemed, as she put it, to have slipped through the cracks of history. In 1994, with support of a grant from the Lexington Council for the Arts, she therefore set out to discover just who Prince Esterbrook was. During the next seven years, she spent much of her free time visiting sites, digging through archives, and conducting interviews. I remember this very well because I often accompanied her on these expeditions. I also remember her frustration as she encountered misinformation, dead ends, and a tantalizing mix of fact and legend. Yet she persisted until she had followed every lead. Finally, in April 2001, she completed and published the book entitled Prince Esterbrook, Slave and Soldier. Her book brought to life the story of a young black man in his early 30s who was a slave owned by Benjamin Esterbrook, a prominent Lexington resident. Prince Esterbrook was described as a kind and courageous man who was well liked by others in the community. On April 19, 1775, as a member of the Lexington Militia, he put his life on the line in the first battle on Lexington Green, despite the fact that he himself was a slave. After recovering from the wound he sustained that day, he continued to serve in the Continental Army until the war ended in 1783. Of the, the approximately 300,000 colonists who embraced the cause of liberty and fought for America's freedom, an estimated 5,000 were African American, Native American, or biracial. Many of the African Americans, like Prince Esterbrook, were slaves. Although the efforts of some of these men received some measure of recognition, and many received their freedom after the war, most have been largely forgotten. As for Prince Esterbrook, he lived the remainder of his life as a free man, first in Lexington and later in Ashby, Massachusetts. He died in 1830 at the age of about 90. Mm. After completing her book, Mickey uh, stated her intention that a portion of the proceeds from its sale be used to support research and projects that foster awareness of Prince Esterbrook and other black patriots. One project she hoped to pursue was to create a physical memorial dedicated to the memory of Prince Esterbrook. She further hoped this memorial could be placed somewhere near Lexington Green so that it would be visible to both Lexington residents and the many people who annually visit our town. Accordingly, after Mickey's death in 2003, my family established a memorial fund for this purpose, and contributions were received from many of her friends and family. Eventually, this fund was transferred to the town of Lexington, trustees of the public trust. In addition, all unsold books were donated to the Lexington Historical Society with a stipulation that one half of the proceeds from their sale be donated to the fund. A portion of the fund has been used for this memorial. The balance is being invested by the town and will be periodically used to fund other projects of the type Mickey envisioned. Before concluding, I would like to thank everyone who made this day possible. This includes the many contributors to the Alice M. Hinkle Memorial Fund, too numerous to list individually. The committee that helps to establish the fund and define its objectives, consisting of my sons, David, Tim, Chris, and Bob, Sandra Shaw, Charles Price, David Williams, Andrew Cleghorn, Mary Gillespie, and Mary Lou Tuart. 
the landscape architect, Gary Larson, who donated his services to and helped supervise the installation of Memorial Rock. The Dan Finn Lexington Minuteman Award Fund for his contribution to the financial support of this research and to the Memorial Fund. And the town of Lexington for approving construction of the memorial, providing this excellent location and installing the rock. Most especially, I would like to thank Sandra Shaw and Charles Price, who together have taken the lead on this project during the past year. Without their persistence and tireless efforts, this project simply would not have happened. Finally, as I look at you, at all of you who are here today, and recognize the uh, familiar faces of so many of Mickey's family and friends, I know, I, I know that she is here in spirit, enjoying this beautiful Patriots Day, as she did so many times in the past. Also, I know that she is so proud of the memorial you have helped to create. Now I would like to introduce Charles Price, who will share with you his unique perspective on the story of Prince Esterbrook and the significance of this memorial. As mentioned earlier, Charlie is a past commander of the Lexington Minutemen, and for more than 30 years, he has portrayed Prince Esterbrook in Patriots Day reenactments of the Battle of Lexington. Mickey often said while writing her book, the long discussions she had with Charlie added passion and heart to the story and helped her to see Prince Esterbrook as a person.